If you've been trying to get pregnant for a while, then this video is for you because here I'll be sharing five tips which can greatly help to boost your fertility and improve your chances of getting pregnant. Now, are you aware that just adjusting the way you eat, having some knowledge about your menstrual cycle, and also changing your mindset could just be what you need to help improve your fertility? Well, these are just a few of what we'll be talking about in this video. If this sounds interesting, please stay tuned. If you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Peace Tracy. I'm a registered nurse and midwife, and I currently practice with NHS in England. If you enjoy this kind of content, please give me a like as you watch and subscribe to my channel because here we talk about fertility, women's health, and everything else. So let's get started. <music> The very first thing you need to do when you are on the journey of trying to conceive is to have a positive mindset. Now, I would say change your mindset. A lot of women who are trying to conceive find themselves having this negative thinking that they can never be pregnant, probably because of what they've heard from their friends, what they've read from books, watched from videos like this, or even what their doctor might have told them. Now, before you begin to have a positive mindset, you should understand what your conditions are. So many women have unexplained causes of infertility. In such situations, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can never get pregnant. It simply means that the cause is unknown and that doesn't mean you can never get pregnant. So the first thing is to have a positive mindset, have a calm heart, make sure your emotions are under control and when you've done all of this, then you can be able to work on your physical well-being, which will make it much more easier for you to get pregnant. So remember that the first point is to change your mindset. Make sure you have a positive mindset. Having said that, let's get to the second point. The second thing you need to do in order to boost your fertility is to make sure that if you have any medical condition, any underlying medical condition like high blood pressure, diabetes, or thyroid problems, make sure that these conditions are under control before you begin to try to conceive. This is very important because it is expected that if you have certain medical conditions, just like the one I've just mentioned, they should be under control even before you get pregnant. This is not just for fertility reasons, but for the safety and well-being of the pregnancy. For instance, if you've got diabetes, in fact, unfortunately, a lot of people have diabetes without even knowing. And that is the reason you must have to make a prenatal appointment, especially if, you, if you've been trying to conceive and it seems like it's not coming. It's important to make that appointment to make sure that you're screened for all of this. For instance, if you've got diabetes or your partner have got diabetes, do you know that diabetes can impact on sperm quality? Now, assuming that as a woman you are fine and it is your partner that has this that diabetes, you could be so stressed doing one or two things, doing this, doing that, you know, and at the end of the day, you get so stressed. So it is very important that you screen yourself properly and make sure that you don't have any medical condition that could be impacting on your fertility and if for any reason you have any of these make sure that they are properly controlled before you begin trying to conceive making them to be under control can greatly and significantly improve your chances of getting pregnant the third thing you need to do is to have a good knowledge of your menstrual cycle in fact i cannot overemphasize the importance of this because if you do every other thing correctly without knowing this it can still make it impossible for you to get pregnant so every woman who is trying to conceive in fact every woman out there is expected to have a knowledge of their menstrual cycle this means that you know your fertile days and the days that you are not fertile let's take for instance many women have a 28 days cycle if you have a 28 day cycle, it's expected that you will be ovulating on the 14th day of your cycle. So it is expected that you can engage in intercourse a few days before you ovulate or even after you ovulate. This is especially important for all these women, especially women who are in long distance marriages or in long distance relationship who are trying to get pregnant. You have to maximize the use of this special moment because if you do not maximize its use, it is very unlikely 
that you'll be able to achieve what you want. So having this knowledge of your menstrual cycle can maximize your chances of getting pregnant. The fourth thing you need to do is to reconsider your protein sources. Remember that protein is a key part of any diet, but it has been found that certain kinds of protein has been found to be especially beneficial for our fertility. And this kind of protein was found in a study that was conducted in 2019. It was discovered that eating a Mediterranean style diet can greatly improve fertility. So what is this Mediterranean style diet? It is not about getting, you know, expensive diet. It's simply telling us that this Mediterranean style diet are foods that are higher in fish and lower in red meat and processed meat. So it simply means that when you are eating, try to incorporate more of fish rather than red meat or any form of processed meat. So if you are someone that eats a lot of hot dog, um, sausages, all of those processed meat, canned meat, please, this is the time to stop or as much as possible reduce the intake of such meats. In fact, it's better for you to invest more in buying fish. In addition, these Mediterranean style diets are very rich in antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids. So when we talk about eating here, we are talking about specific protein sources, which I've talked about eating more of fish than red meat or processed meat, and then eating foods that are very high in antioxidants. So when we talk about foods that are high in antioxidants, we are talking about various fruits, vegetables, which are very common in every part of the world, and then eating foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. So this is what this 2019 study found out, that it greatly improves fertility in women. And there's more reason to continue adding more fish to your diet because another study conducted in 2018 found out that eating more fish was linked to having higher rates of life births, especially in women who had assisted reproductive technology, such as in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is IVF as, as it is commonly called. So it's saying that women who had in vitro fertilization and ate more fish had higher chances of having live babies, live births, compared to those who did not. So that is a science-based research. And I believe that it's something that can really help women to boost their fertility and improve their chances of getting pregnant. The final point is particularly going to be helpful for women who have PCOS. PCOS simply means polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the final point is eating a bigger diet in the morning and eating less in the evening. Now, it has been found that eating more in the morning helps to manage the symptoms that are associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So what this simply means is that you should eat a larger portion of your meals as breakfast and eat lesser portion as your dinner. This helps to manage the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome. However, when choosing this breakfast, make sure you go for breakfast with lower calories. When I say eating, you know, bigger breakfast, that doesn't mean you eat a very big bowl of rice or you eat a very big bowl of fufu or semo, depending on whatever you eat but go for foods that have less calories. Let's take, for instance, if you want to eat rice as part of your breakfast, it's advisable that instead of just going for the regular white rice, you might decide to go for either the brown rice or the black rice. This is because the brown and black rice has less calories compared to the white rice. I did some research on this. I found out that if you're eating, for instance, one cup of white rice, you will have 236 grams of calories in the white rice, but if you go for the brown rice, you have 222 calories, while for the black rice, it contains only 200 calories. Now, let's compare the protein sources. For the white rice, you have 3.5 grams of protein in one cup of white rice. Then for the brown rice, you have 4.5 grams of protein but for the black rice, you have six grams of protein. This is just what you find in one cup of it. So that is to say, you can try to look for alternatives that have you know, less calories 
compared to the other ones. By so doing, you are able to minimize your risk of spiking your blood glucose levels and even causing more problems for yourself. So in summary, what I'm saying in this fifth point is that whatever you decide to eat, make sure that especially if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, that you eat more of your calories as breakfast as you're going to be using it throughout the day when you are active to do whatever you want to do. If you're going to school, you're going to work, going to shopping, doing all of the house chores, you use up all of this energy in the day. And at night, you can go for something with very little amount of calories. As research has shown that this helps to control or you know, manage the hormonal problems that are associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you really enjoyed this video, please kindly give me a like and subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions so far, please leave them for me in the comment section and I'll answer them all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next. Bye for now.